the Valley Today. Breaking news this morning. UND is investigating a social media incident that has some people raising racism concerns. And several officers hurt overnight as protests turned violent in North Carolina after another officer involved shooting. And this morning, waking up to another lovely sunrise. However, more rain showers out there. I'll have the latest for you coming up in weather. Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online and on the go. This is the Valley Today on Fargo CW. Hi again and good morning everyone. We're starting with breaking news this morning out of the Northern Valley. Firefighters from 10 departments are battling a huge grain elevator fire. It's happening in the town of Kennedy, Minnesota. Now, police dispatchers tell Valley News Live it all started around midnight at the Farmers Elevator Company. Check out this picture that we just got into the newsroom, and you can see a huge amount of flames. Now, so far, no injuries are reported, and there's no word yet on a cause of the fire. We do have a crew headed to Kennedy for coverage on this story. Of course, we will continue to update you throughout the Valley today and online at valleynewslive.com. Also breaking for you this morning, the University of North Dakota is investigating an incident on social media that's raising concerns about racism. A student at UND allegedly left her cell phone in her room and three other students used it to take a Snapchat photo with a racially charged caption. The victim was unaware the picture had been posted to her account until a friend told her about it. Several people have reached out to the university on various social media platforms notifying them of this photo. The university replied on Twitter saying they are in the process of gathering information and investigating and take this matter seriously. Now this incident at UND comes less than a week after a Kansas State student was expelled for posting a racist photo on Snapchat. Of course, you can stay with Valley News Live for updates on this breaking story. Time now to get a check of weather on this Wednesday morning, and we check in with meteorologist Lisa Green. Good morning. Another start with some soggy conditions for some of us. So want to make sure you're ready for that. This is this time in the Northern Valley, Southern Valley. We're looking a lot better. As we take a look outside, you can see on our sky cam a beautiful start to the day in Fargo. We've got some sunshine getting ready for us. The sun hasn't exactly risen yet, but it will be shortly. And we do have some clouds that have moved in as well. So it kind of gives you an idea of what we're going to be dealing with today. A couple of wisps coming out of the clouds indicating there might be just a little bit of rain falling uh, from those this morning. Very small amounts though. The main area of rain is up to the north, up along the Grand Forks area, north from there, basically Highway 2 and north. Thief River Falls, you saw some showers, heavier showers roll through. Those are just now moving east of you, uh, east of Highway 59 here. Uh, you're still getting the rain, just not the heavier stuff. And then over into Western Marshall, north of Grand Forks, another round of rain. And then Devil's Lake, you've been seeing rain showers rolling through this morning. Now just north of you, you're going to have some heavier rain uh, pass by. So this moving west to east impacting the northern valley this time. Southern valley, I mentioned there's a couple of spotty little cells where we're seeing a couple of sprinkles popping up. And that's going to continue uh, for the morning hours. Eventually that will clear out and we'll get some sun too. 52 degrees in Fargo, 54 in Grand Forks. We're at 45 in Bemidji. And the wind is on the light side for most places. It will be picking up today and we have had a gust to 18 in Fergus Falls. So rain showers again through the morning hours. 10 a.m. still looking at those in the northern valley, southern valley, and contrasting some sunshine. And by noon into the mid to upper 60s there. Up north, around around 60 degrees for you with mostly cloudy skies. Off and on chances for some sprinkles in the northern valley, especially today. Highs where we get some sun, some of us hitting the low 70s, 72 degrees in Fargo. And heading into the later evening hours tonight, expect to see those temperatures starting to scale back a little bit into the 60s by 8 o'clock and clouds starting to build in. And we'll talk more about that seven-day planner coming up. But again today, a rainy one, this time in the north. Thank you, Lisa. We're following more breaking news overnight in Charlotte, North Carolina, where city officials are calling for calm this morning after the deadly police shooting of a black man sparked violent protests overnight that le left at least 12 officers hurt. The man who was killed, 43-year-old Keith Scott, was allegedly shot in his car while reading a book yesterday, but police maintain Scott had a gun. Now, the officer involved has been identified as Brentley Vinson, an African-American who has been on the force since 2014. Authorities say he has been placed on standard administrative leave. Developing this morning, the man accused of carrying out a series of weekend bombings in New York and New Jersey 
now faces federal terrorism charges. Ahmad Rahami was charged yesterday with at least 10 federal counts, including the use of weapons of mass destruction. The suspect's father says he had called the FBI about his son years ago, expressing terrorism concerns. Well, new for you this morning, the House Homeland Security Committee is set to meet today to talk about those explosions in New York and New Jersey over the weekend. This morning's hearing will address how to stop potential future attacks. The New York Police Department Deputy Commissioner for Intelligence and Counterterrorism will provide testimony at that hearing. And we're following new developments from the St. Cloud Mall stabbing, which injured 10 people. It's now being turned over to the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force. The St. Cloud Police Department will remain involved in the case, but only to assist in the task force's evaluation. The FBI has also asked the Fargo Police Department for information it has about the attacker, Dahir Adan. Fargo Police Chief David Todd says that they have provided dates surrounding Adan's time living in Fargo. Murder and arson charges have been filed in connection with a June house fire in Moorhead, where investigators later found a woman's body. Justin Critt is charged with second-degree murder and first-degree arson in the death of 49-year-old Melissa Wilcoxon of Moorhead. Her body was found in a burned-out home on the 1000 block of 11th Avenue South. Now, Valley News Live spoke with Critt at a house fire a day before in Detroit Lakes. While no charges have been filed there, investigators are looking into a possible connection involving Critt. He was previously convicted of first-degree arson in 1995 in Becker County, after he was involved in a fire at the Detroit Lakes Junior High School. Crit is being held in the Cass County Jail on unrelated robbery charges. He'll stay there until he's extradited to Minnesota. This week marks a sad anniversary for family and friends of former NDSU student Tom Beerson. It's now been two years since his disappearance and murder, but there is still no motive and there have been no arrests in his case. Beerson was last seen at a party in North Fargo two years ago yesterday. His body was discovered at an RV lot in Moorhead three days later. Police say Beerson's death is still considered the department's highest priority. Now, Tom Beerson's parents are speaking out about their lives since their son's death. To read more of their story, you can head to our website, valleynewslive.com. Fargo police say they need your help in identifying the woman in this picture on your TV screen right now who they say is involved in a burglary. The officials say she's suspected of forgery stemming from a garage burglary back in May. If you have any information, contact the Fargo Police Department. Authorities are investigating after a head-on crash with a semi killed a man in Becker County, Minnesota. The crash happened around 7.30 yesterday morning on Becker County Highway 2. The sheriff says the pickup crossed into oncoming traffic and hit the semi. Now, the driver of the semi, Shane Eggie of Barnesville, has non-life-threatening injuries from the crash. The driver of the pickup was pronounced dead at the scene. His name isn't being released until his family is notified. The Morton County Sheriff's Office in Central North Dakota has started a task force to investigate a confrontation between security and pipeline protesters. The incident involving mace and dogs happened back on September 3rd. The investigation is set to focus on private security hired by the Dakota Access Pipeline and whether that security was licensed. They are also exploring whether or not native artifacts were disturbed at the work site. Dakota Access says protesters were trespassing and acting aggressively towards the private security team, while protesters say they were expressing their First Amendment rights. The North Dakota Department of Health has announced the state's second West Nile virus-related death this year. The individual was a man who lived in central North Dakota and over the age of 60. Now, as of today, 60 human West Nile cases have been reported in 24 counties in North Dakota this year. Last year, North Dakota had 23 West Nile cases and one death. Could you be getting sick from your cat? The Center for Disease Control and Prevention says you can get a bacterial infection known as cat scratch fever from a scratch or bite. The symptoms include headaches, fever, and swollen lymph nodes. Cat scratch fever is actually pretty rare. About 12,000 people get it a year. If you have your heart set on a kitchen remodel, stick around. We have ways for you to get the most bang for your bucks that you'll be spending on that renovation.